Hello, this is Ron Clements from Sundance DSP, and here I am going to show how an application targeting a DSP and an FPGA can be generated using PARS. In this demo, we use SysGen blocks for the FPGA, but equally we could have used the HDL coder instead. This demo consists of a filter operation on an input signal and the displaying of the input and the filtered signal on the host. The hardware in this case is an SMT395 VP30 module which has both a DSP and a Vertex 2 Pro FPGA. As the FPGA is partially used for Sundance firmware, we call this an attached FPGA. Later on in the next demo, you will see how this application can target a DSP on SMT395, VP30, and an FPGA on the SMT368 module where the FPGA is not an attached processor. You may want to refer to the first video where the attached FPGA hardware is described in the PARS GET HIM file. Open the Simulink model as shown. In this demo, the various blocks are always turned into subsystems to save time as you have already seen that process previously. Four subsystems will show in the Simulink window. They have already been appropriately named and reorganized for clarity. By clicking on the host subsystem, you can see that it consists of two signal generators on the host where they are combined together and then fed to a scope and to the subsystem on the embedded hardware. The final output of the embedded system is also fed to the scope. We can now examine the content of each subsystem to see its function. In the second subsystem, you can see some Xilinx blocks and in the outside, the SysGen blocks. The input signal from the previous subsystem will go through a filter and conversions before being fed to the next step. Note that the output of the FPGA blocks must always go through a DSP task before being transferred to the host. Hence, in this demo, there is a third task which targets the DSP and takes in the output from the FPGA block before feeding it to the scope running on the host. By clicking on the SysGen symbol we can see the ISE setup and select the correct target FPGA. We need to create a couple of channels between the DSP and the FPGA. One for transferring the data from the DSP and one for receiving the data from the FPGA. We can achieve this by clicking on the diamond configuration block and selecting end of configuration file and then type in the window the statements place XXYY which means create a channel called XX on physical wire YY. In this case we have created two channels. Note that for previous instances we may want to select a different location in the configuration file for the insertion of special statements. Click OK and then save the simulation window before simulating the model by pressing play. Click on the host subsystem so that the output scopes can display the results. Now that the simulation works well close the model and start PARS. In PARS, we need to select the correct hardware for our demo and then select SysGen as the FPGA tool and press Accept. The correct hardware and FPGA tool should now be displayed in PARS window. Open the model in PARS to display the FPGA filter PARS model. As shown before, each subsystem needs to be selected in turn and converted to a DSP, FPGA, or host task. Up to now, we never used the FPGA blue button in any of the demos. Note that the FPGA task shows to be assigned to root, which is a DSP. 
Click on the FPGA task and change it to be assigned to FPGA resources. Save and then click the yellow button for the magic to happen. At this stage, PARS will call the DSP and FPGA tools and will create a test bench as before. In this demo, the FPGA tools will be called to generate and then synthesize, map, and route, which typically takes a long time. In order to shorten the time for this video, we have clipped that part where all this will take place. You will be able to see the progress of the stages in the MATLAB command window. Eventually, PARS will come up with the application and report success. Click OK and then run the application as shown in the previous examples for the test bench. This should be exactly the same as previous demos and when running the demo the same window should be shown when simulating the model. This concludes this demo. Thanks for your time and if you need any information you know where to reach us.